Pollination by vertebrates is more important in the tropics than in temperate habitats. Plants that have co-evolved with hummingbirds as pollinators have tubular flowers that are usually red or orange. Birds see color, bats do not. Plants that depend on bats for pollination usually have flowers that are green or pale, but they do have a strong smell, usually not pleasant. These flowers produce nectar late in the day and into the night, and their flowers open after dark. This macuna vine has a candelabra-like flower arrangement, and this modified petal has been shown to act as a reflector for bat echolocation signals so as to help the bat find the flowers. A kind of X marks the spot. Bam! A drop of nectar and a cloud of pollen. A waste for both the plant and the flower. This bat hug probably covers the bat in pollen. Bats pollinate over 500 plant species. Each one has its own ecological story. The wild banana of Southeast Asia needs bats to set fruit, but the bananas grown in the New World tropics do not need bats for pollination. The durian is one of the few commercial fruits that needs bats for pollination. This Asian fruit is delicious, but stinky. Well, you want to get some? No. Want to try? I got my chocolate. Is it good? Very good. I don't think I can eat it now. I smelled it. You smelled it? I smelled it. This is a great snack if you have a cold. Durian. Hop, hop. In the rainforests of the world, many plant species are bat pollinated. Most of these plants have flowers that open in the early evening, like this Caliandra tree. The nectaries are at the base of the flower, so the bats get covered in pollen on their way in to drink. Of course, a lot of flowers means a lot of nectar, which means a lot of bats. Here a bat grabs an insect before going in for some nectar. Depending on the flower, pollen can be placed on the bat's head, as in this case, or on its nose, or on its chest, or on the back of its head. Here the endangered lesser long-nosed bat is feeding on the tequila agave. See how the pollen-covered anthers hit the belly of this bat. Eventually, pollen is transferred to the stigma, the female part of the plant, to affect pollination. The bat gets sugar-rich nectar, and the plant gets pollinated and sets fruit. Everybody is happy. Bats fly really fast in real time, so generally one hardly sees what's happening. On this pseudobombyx flower, the nectar is at the base of the flower, the pollen on the tips of the anthers, and the stigma on a single stalk. The bat has to feed many times before it goes in at the right angle to press the stigma against its pollen-covered chest. In the Margravia family of rainforest lianas, the flowers are positioned above and the large nectaries hang below. As the bats come in to get to the nectaries, they hit the flower's anthers. They also check out the flowers for nectar too. There they go for the nectaries. 
In this species, the flower buds point upwards and the nectaries downwards. Besides the nectar bat, an ant and a moth want some sweetness too.